Yeah, yeah, you definitely will get your point across. And this one of the reasons why. See, in the battle, when 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 Big K came out saying that about Adi Boom and um he passed the paperwork out, right there in the in, in the venue, it's it it didn't get it didn't get big until the battle was over. Like during the battle, people still under speculation of whether this is true or not. They don't really know. So it at the time it was said said in a battle, it wasn't it wasn't effective like like that. You know what I'm saying? It was after the battle that when people really got to sit back on it and really really process it, then it was like, "Wow." But at the battle, no. He 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 still could have uh, got his stuff off. So let me ask you this question, Natalie. Let me ask you this. Why do you believe you was you was hired then? Like 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 when you looking at the situation, why do you believe you was hired? I feel like my client wanted to get his point across and he wanted someone to come up here and explain to him what's going on. And I took personally to the situation and wanted his voice to be heard. Yes, everybody puts a facade up online. I do, you do, your, your viewers do. You don't know your viewers for real. So at the end of the day, my client is trying and doing his best to change his life. If someone is doing their best and they're reaching, I'm going to meet them halfway. Because you don't leave nobody hanging that's trying to get help. If someone reaches out to you for help, are you going to say no because you feel as if this person is a snitch? If someone reaches out to you and says, hey, I just want to let my side of the story be heard or relate this without feeling overpowered or overcrowded or just someone belittled me because of a situation that I know you weren't in the room with my client. Nobody else was in the room but the detectives that were interviewing him. But at the end of the day, my client is trying to move on with his life. Yes, people are still driving this on. It's going to die down eventually. But everyone that was involved in this situation made a mistake that cost them something. This man has a family. He didn't get to see his family as much. Where are these homeboys that he was so down with that he was running around with where are they at if someone tells you hey if you don't tell me what's going on or what was the situation you're going to spend 17 plus years in jail you're not going to see your family I don't know what I would do my family is my life your family is your life too so you would rather not see your family or not spend time with your family you'd rather spend time in jail for stupid petty reasons yes I call it that because that was really literally what this situation is. Living in the kitchen is a big deal from that side of the, you know, the, the neighborhood. So I feel as if, you know, my client is trying to change his life. He deserves that chance too. You Just know, like you got the chance to change your life. Why is it that gangsters, mobbers, and robbers get more respect in the streets than snitches? Like, you know? Uh, no, I look at, I look at it like this. They are killing someone. What did his snitching do that affected you so badly? Not you in general, but everyone I speak of that affected you guys so badly that you have to throw so much hate and despise and just criticism at him. Yes. Don't we all snitch? We do. I'm pretty sure the people that are going so hard about this situation have snitched. The ones that call themselves so hood and gangsters have snitched. So, why y'all riding him so hard? This man is just trying to correct the mistake that he made. We talk about giving our men a chance. This is the time that you guys are supposed to come together and give our men a chance to get their life together. He went to prison. He learned. He got out. He's trying to make it better. Why not give him a chance? What is so different about him and other snitches? What is so different about the people that talk about their about their life and they can do this, that, and that, but then they get the chance, they get the opportunity, they get out and get celebrated. Like, you know, it, well, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. Well, and well, I feel like this man deserves a chance. Yeah, he deserves a chance, but the difference is you, 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 you speaking as a representative. You're not, you're not, you, you're not 
doing what he's supposed to be doing, which is taking initiative and owning up to responsibility. You saying he want to change and he want to do all this, but he 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 haven't he haven't took ownership and responsibility. Hear me out. Hear me out for what I'm saying because you ask questions. Now let me answer some of the questions you ask. The, again, on, taking ownership and responsibility is something he haven't done. You the one that's admitting that he did it and that he learned from it and that he 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 that but he haven't presented that like that because he's still in denial to what to this day of what he done. He's steady saying all the the, and the as a public relations agent, that is what I'm here for. So you hear the so you hear to clean up a lie, but you can't clean it up when yeah. it's the, how you gonna clean up a lie when the truth is against them. That's that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. Yes. I What you say? I said, I believe you're a Christian. Is it a sin to snitch or aren't Christians supposed to confess their sins? Yeah, we confess our sins, but here's the here's the di but here's you know, the difference. But you, but but you, see, you're not talking about a Christian. You're talking about a brother who 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 going up under what is called the street code, and according to his street code, his G code, these are the things that that that's a no no in that area. So of course, a Christian wouldn't be looked at as being a snitch when he's standing up for the for the truth. Now, when you are when you are agreeing to be a part of something, it's like I can't agree to a murder and go in on this murder. Then I tell on everybody when we get caught. No, that's not that's not that's not standing on the truth. So you're saying you cannot change? No, I'm not saying that. You saying that? What I'm trying to tell you is, you're not really looking at it. You're looking at it from. Like you're saying he cannot change. No, I'm I'm telling you, you think want, look. You want these young men to live by street codes when they're being gunned down every single day? No, I don't. And, and what you doing what you doing is changing the narrative, sweetheart. You're changing the no, narrative. Changing the narrative yes, you are, because go ahead, Natalie. Go ahead and speak. Now, now I let you speak and I ain't say nothing. But you won't even let me answer the questions. I'm telling you, if you want our young men to have a different mentality and stop doing this snitching and hood stuff, because this is where it's going to end up. All of our young men in the hood who you want them to not snitch or not do this or run with a gang or run with the street or run with the hood, claim a street that does not belong to them or don't have no name or property, that have family members that love them and want these men to come home, they're going to end up like every other black man that has been shot at or killed because they want to be with the gang. Yes, this man... When it, he put up a facade and said he was with the gang. And then when time comes, he folded. He made, yes, he, when he came out, he didn't admit it at first. But then you guys threw something at him, and he felt like he had to tell his side of the story. So he did. You guys are still, you guys are listening, but you're not understanding him. Why you would we, he, okay, let me ask you something. If that was your sons or daughters, if that was your sons or daughters or anybody, your nieces, your nephews, anyone, you would not want this to be them. You would not want them to be in this situation. And I don't want people in, who are going to watch this and listen to this hit you with the, oh, my kids will never do this. No, he didn't have that adult. So what did he do? He went to the streets to have some type of family, some type of help. And the help that he got wasn't a healthy one. It wasn't a mentally healthy one, emotionally, physically, mentally. It was not. So what I'm telling you is what I'm asking you as an individual, as a father, I don't know if you are a father or not, you have a family, you have nieces and nephews. See from his perspective as a kid, if that was your daughter or your son or something, and they ask them, say, hey, what happened? Do you want them to lie or tell the truth? Like, so what do you want him to do? Well, well, you well, well you can't. Well, time in jail? well, if it's in. If it's in black and look, if it's in black and white, white ain't no way for him to get around it anyway. And this one I'm trying, this one I'm trying to tell you what what hurt his argument. It's already the statements and paperwork is already out. You get what I'm saying? And and the thing about it crazy is you is admitting to his guilt. He still haven't done that. And this is what keep 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 hurting him because he keeps saying no. When the paperwork is saying yes, then witnesses coming out against him also. Now you saying the brother trying to change, but he's still talking about how he lived that life and in the streets. So it, it's like 
it's a contradictory to what you're trying to get people to accept from him. And that don't line up. And then you saying his life affected. What about the guys who doing together 30 years behind his behind his statements? What about that? One guy got 17 years. One guy got 13 years. What about their family? What about their children? What about the thing they being okay, deprived of? The they should have all thought about that you proving my point that's the very point you proving if that's the case he should have thought about that too he was grown you you still speak as if he was a child how, how was a child when this are we talking about when this situation happened he was a child so you think 19 years old if he was a child why would they send him to a a, a grown man facility why would they send him to the department of correction where only adults could be in if he was a child just because a piece of paper says 18 and older is legal does not mean you are mentally capable of understanding everything in this world. At 19, did you have the world figured out? No, you didn't. At I still don't got the world figured out, and I'm 45. Exactly. So why are you guys giving him such a hard time? No, no, no. It don't work like that, sweetheart. You trying to? It's like you trying to sweep it under the rug. You don't think those guys in prison that's doing the 30 years missing their family, their children, want to be free, want to be married, want to be happy also? You don't think that? If, if they was all in agreement when they went in and do the crime, then they should have all been in agreement after the crime. So you would want him to comply with the streets, and it should have taken the time for his comrades that were involved in this situation which could have put him more than 20 plus years in jail man look that's the consequences you take when you involved in that lifestyle you we can't rationalize we can't rationalize what we want to after we get caught you, how, what if they would have went in the house and killed them people who the house they went in and shot the guns off to take their stuff from them why do those people got to live in fear don't you think them people are probably affected by that right now to this day? People coming into their house with guns on them and firing in their house? You don't think that they probably still traumatized by that today? Now, you're calling him a snitch. You're thinking about this situation now, but you guys are calling him a snitch, right? And he told about what happened. So What would you call him? What would you call it? What was the streets at for him? He He was the streets. What are you talking about? These young men are not the streets. Stop putting them How are they not the streets and they in the streets? They go to the streets for help. The streets but they the ones in the streets. So do, do, do they own the streets? They think they own no, them. Right? Do they own the hood? No. The they think they, they, they do. Or, or or why else would they why why else would they kick kicking people doors and pull guns out on them if they don't think they own the street and blocks? I don't get this. I, it's like you speaking you speaking as a representative and you're not speaking really on truth. You're trying to clean up something that you can't clean up. That's what's crazy about this situation. You it's like okay, well ultimately he did his time. The others are doing their time. Because he snitched on them. You guys want you guys want him to admit that he snitched. We don't need him to listen, listen. We don't need him to admit he snitched. We know he snitched. Why would we need him to admit he snitched when we know he snitched? You literally said he needs to come through and own up to it. No, I said that. I said because you saying that. This is what I said, Natalie. I said because you saying that, he haven't said that yet. I know exactly what I say. I ain't say he got to come out and own up to it. You was you was speaking as though he came out and owned up to it. You want to hear it from him. You want to hear it from him, right? That is the I don't I, listen, this is what I'm telling you. I don't need to hear it from him because I told I I told him out the gate. He should have just shut his mouth and didn't say nothing. Okay, let me ask you this question, Natalie. Where do you think he went wrong at? And this whole thing, if from your knowledge of what you know, where do you think he went wrong at? I think he went wrong when he decided to think the streets are a way of life. When there are so many other places you could have went to, he could have went to, or any other individual could have went to. The streets is not your life. No, I'm talking, look, I'm not, I'm not talking about, the, I'm wrong. talking about right now in this situation where he had to hire you. Where do you think he went wrong at? 
before he had to hire you. That ain't what I asked you. I, I, I'm asking you, where do you think he went wrong at before hiring you? Did not go wrong anywhere. He did not. If my client does not want to speak on it, he doesn't. If he wants me to come up here and represent him, I'm going to represent him. No. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, no. You, 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 re look, but you're going into it all wrong. How are you going to represent him and give statements and speak on things when you don't even have the full knowledge of what you're speaking about? So that's even hurting the situation worse. You don't see that? Natalie. Oh, if you are going to. What happened to your phone? Your phone muted out. So I didn't hear nothing you were saying. What was you saying? I'm saying that my client hired me to relate something to you and have this interview with you. And that is what I am doing. But you oh, so he wanted, so your client wanted you to come do an interview can I, with me? Can I, please, can I please get out when you ask me a question? I'm yes, go ahead. You asked me, you told me that you wanted my client to admit his guilt and what he did. That, you said that is the translation I got from you earlier. If my client doesn't want to get on here and say he did it or he didn't do it, yes, you say that paperwork. That proves that he did it. So why here! Did to Take it! Take it! No, 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 girl, get up out of here with that trash. You know, if you have legit paperwork, black and white, remember? That's not your word, you have it in black and white. So, if he did it, you have to leave him alone, let him do what he got to do. Don't, don't, what is it? Don't get with his music, don't listen to his stuff no more, do what you got to do. But, at the end of the day, we all make our mistakes. We all know our truth. He served his time. He did what he had to do. Just like you served your time, did what you had to do. You come back out, you made a life for yourself. So if you did something like that in the past or something, just did put yourself in that shoes or something. Even if you won't do that, you did something like that. If someone comes out and they're harassing you every day, you're just trying to live your life or whatnot. Would you want that to happen to you? Would you how would you feel if you put yourself in that shoes? How would you feel? How would I feel? I, I feel good because I, I already know how to handle I already I'm different. I can't speak for him because here's the thing. If I did that, then I'm going to accept what comes with it, period. No if and buts about it. Right or wrong, good or bad, I'm going to accept what comes with it because I put myself in that situation. Now, here's my thing I want to ask you. So you say your client your client wanted you wanted you to do this interview? Yes, my client wanted me, because I cannot come up here and speak without the okay, because that could be client validation, and what kind, I cannot, you know, do that without him. So, on the other hand, he served his time, he snitched on himself as well, he got time out of his life, time that he could be using to do something else, same as the other clients as well. That happens. That happens in life, but we all deal with it a different way. All my client is asking for is just to let this die down and just let it go. Because there's so many snitches in this world, but we don't treat him like it because he is somewhat famous in the rap battle community. Famous? Being, wait, wait. He's famous in the rap community. He told you that? I, I, said, I said somewhat famous in the no. rap battle community. I didn't say famous. <laughs> no. I said no, 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 no. You do know your client. Uh, you do know your client, the PG, right? You know what a PG is? No, please explain to me what a PG is. A PG is like one of the lowest tiers in battle rap. He ain't even a mid tier. It's PG mid tier, top tier. PG mid tier, top tier, legend, superstar. He a PG. He haven't arrived yet at all. This, this, look, this he. But you just gave him a status. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you his real status. I'm the star. I'm the star. He ain't no star. I'm the star. Famous. He ain't famous. 
<laughs> he a disappointment. He ain't famous. Girl, <laughs> you need another client. <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> I feel like this is a very immature way to Look, Natalie. Natalie. Girl, you better get another client. <laughs> I'm going to hire you. Could I hire you? Natalie. You want, you want to hire me? Yeah, can I hire you? Sure, what's your case? <laughs> what, what's my case? I got a case. A lot of, a lot of women like me. What I'm supposed to do? Oh. <laughs> Natalie. What I'm supposed to do with all these women like me? Cause I'm a star. Did you I know, know I did you know I was a star? I know you're famous. I've seen a few of you regarding right. the situation, of course. I like you, Natalie. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> I like you, Natalie. I, hey, you you from Jersey too? No, I'm not. I am from VA. Oh, how far is that from Jersey? You are about probably twelve hours. I ahead. look. I ain't in no Jersey. I ain't in Jersey, sweetheart. Oh, well, I don't know. I've never been to Jersey before. So. Oh, I ain't from Jersey. I'm from Chicago. What you know about oh, that? Uh, Y'all got dirty water, I think. <laughs> no, that's Detroit. That's Detroit. See, I got to school you, sweetheart. See, I got to take you up under the wings and school. I'm hiring you. How do how do You're I how, how do I get your services? How do I you you know you have my number? Uh oh, I'm gonna use it too. <laughs> I'm a you. Adi, boom. Thank you for the hookup. You at least did something right. <laughs> well, I just hope that, you know, I mean, it might not clarify everything. It might not make the situation better, but. You need to, de you need to defend somebody. Argument. You need to defend somebody who more credible. I'm finna hire you. You finna work for me. I, you need you. He gonna hurt. He gonna hurt your credibility, girl. He gonna he gonna bring your stock down. You can't defend him. You need to defend somebody more credible, man. Somebody who got something better going on in their life, man. I, I'm finna call you. I'm finna call her all the time. I, don't even worry about it. We gonna call Natalie. We gonna we gonna call Natalie and put her where she really need to be. This dude finna hurt your stock, girl. Well, I am fun, and I have a list of clients that I get a hefty amount from, and I am good. Everything will be fine, but I just wanted, you know, to do my job, and I'm pretty sure. My well, job you is definitely finna here. be fine, cause I'm calling you. I'm finna hire Natalie. I like Natalie. I think she got. I think she got more to offer than. See, this is an interview, y'all. Trust me, this girl got a lot of power, or she wouldn't be in position to be hired. I like women like that who about their business, who who actually making something out of themselves. And did you hear what she was talking about? They they killing each other in the street. They trying to change. I like powerful women like this, man. I, these are the women I need on my team, man, to make a difference. And I'm single, so I'm definitely gonna be calling. <laughs> committed to a life that's not committed to them. Why are you committed to, is that your job? That's not your job. Right. We have so, well, I get it's hard to get in these programs, but you have so many resources around you. You lot of resources. You don't need to be in the street. You don't need to be trying to be gang gang with everything. Like, no. The streets do not owe you anything. Right. All your family gets you better. You owe the people in your life. You owe your kids, your niece and your nephew, your aunt, your uncle, the people that help raise you. Right. Yes, I get it. You went to the streets for something, but at the end of the day, when you're sitting up in jail, the streets aren't visiting you. The streets aren't putting money in your books. Right. So why are you committed to it? Is that a nine to five job? It's not. Is it paying you while this pandemic is going on? No. Right. So many of our young men, women are dying every single day. Right. Like what else? What else? As as a mom. I don't want my son to go out there and join the gang. No, I'm going to show him all the love I can. That's what parents need to do. Right. So you better make sure that, too. You, yeah, def you, to you definitely that better make sure you raise our son right. You better not make. You better not let him ever go to the streets. We're going to have a problem. 
my son will not go to the streets. So yes, our son, is de- our son is definitely yeah. not going to the streets. I'm going to make sure I stay in his life. <laughs> Yeah, I just can't. I, it's just sad, especially you know recently with what's going on with the media. Right. So I just put. I try not to see color, but you can't see you don't see color with everything that's happening right now. Right. And our young percent of our young men populate the. So why tell them to go to the streets? Why to go depend on a thing when at the end of the day they're going to end up right in the in the in the jail cells that we try to prevent them from going to, or right. nine six feet under. You know, right. nobody wants to bury son. Nobody wants to bury their daughters. Right. You know how that would be to have to put your own, you have to bury your own son first before you 